Okay, well, right before starting, can everybody bring out their phones as you might need them later on in the presentation? So, uh, well, hello, everyone. We are the Shark Seekers, the Design Challenge team composed of me, myself, Mateo, Nikita, Chris, Brian, Ellen, Elliot, Sashin, and Juliana. A key part of our challenge, as it's in our name, is sharks. So why are sharks so important? Well, right now, we have over 500 species of sharks, which have lived in our oceans for over 400 million years. As either apex predators or part of the cleanup crew, sharks are crucial to the ecosystem. They cycle our nutrients, balance our food change, and serve an integral role in the economy of our fisheries. Yet every year, as many as 100 million sharks are killed, and populations have declined by over 90% due to overfishing, climate change, and habitat destruction. Yet hope is not lost. As organizations such as our partners, the Shark Stewards are here to help. The Shark Stewards' mission is to restore ocean health by saving sharks from overfishing and protecting critical marine habitats through the establishment of shark sanctuaries. They apply education and science source advocacy for shark fin trade bans, the strengthening of fisheries policy, the creation of marine protected areas, and the reduction of ocean plastic pollution. We had the honor of working with David McGuire, founder and director of the Shark Stewards, and notably a Cal alumni as well. Yet the Shark Stewards are running to some challenges. To advocate for policy change, you need data. Yet there is no central database for shark sightings and catches in California. Right now, staff, interns, and volunteers are mining various data sources and scouring the web for California shark sightings, a very labor-intensive and time-consuming process. The Shark Stewards asked us, is there a better way to mine these data sources online and coalesce them? Another challenge is that people are fearful of sharks, and there's a lack of education on their importance. So once again, they ask, is there an easier way to educate the public on the benefits of sharks to the ecosystem and the dangers of shark catch? Our solution will be used to launch Shark Watch, an initiative to protect public health and West Coast sharks. Shark Watch will coalesce shark sightings catch data in mean, an easy to use and easy to understand database. It'll incorporate a warning system to warn swimmers and surfers of sharks nearby and expand public knowledge of sharks and the benefits they bring. Furthermore, our solution will be used to create policy briefs to advocate for the protection of California sharks. So now moving on to the next portion of our presentation, we'd like to discuss our background research which helped us through our ideation process. Much of our background research was less centered around finding shark sighting information, but rather researching current tools that are being used to help gather such data. A reality check for us through our research process searching for different tools was that we do not have unlimited resources. In the beginning, we were looking into gathering satellite data, using sound waves, and even drones to help us gather more info. But through this, we realized that not only is it not feasible with the resource at our disposal, but it also lacked community involvement that we believe was necessary to educate the public on the necessities of sharks in our ecosystem, all of which have helped shape our finalized ideas that you see here today. We went in with the intent of trying to find new ways to gather data with one main goal being able to supplement shark steward with information they can use when creating policy briefs in order to send to legislative officials when trying to create protected areas and bring issues, awareness of the issue of overfishing. So all of this has led to our restructured how might we. How might we create and implement new ways to coalesce data sources on shark catch? How can these data and proposed tools better educate the public about sharks and the important necessary roles they play in the marine ecosystem? After finalizing our research, we came up with three main areas of focus for our project that touch on all aspects of the issue we were hoping to solve. Citizen science, with the lack of community involvement, we thought it'd be best to tackle the problem directly at its source. Through engaging with citizen science, we can collaborate with the general public, gaining knowledge from them while also making them more aware of the issue at hand. Through education, we can target fishermen and educate them on the dangers of overfishing, seeing as though most data on shark encounters comes from this population. And lastly, through the creation of a social media web scraper tool that uses an algorithm to mine shark data from different social media platforms, we're hoping shark stewards can use this in the near future. So what are our solutions? The first is citizen science. Through the creation of a QR code and a web-based platform, we are able to gather data from the public in real time, a walkthrough of which you will see shortly. After creating our prototype, our next step was to generate interest in it by contacting businesses and other platforms near the piers and other bodies of water. Currently, we've been, able, we've been able to generate interest from lifeguard towers, who got to look at a version of our Figma prototype and gave us good ideas on how to improve shark sighting information, and have agreed to put our QR codes up on, up on their buildings. By educating employees of these businesses on our goal, as well as allowing them to scan the code themselves and input data, we hope we can spread the knowledge to the general public. With data incoming from people in real time, we needed to find a way to link it to Shark Stewards website so they can constantly collect this new information and put it to good use. 
The data is not only used to educate the public and keep them engaged with our issue, but we're hoping that the influx of information can be used to create policy briefs in the new near future. One important thing to mention is where we drew inspiration from, from our first product. Merlin Bird ID is a unique app that allows users to scan pictures of birds, input some geographical and contextual information, and from that, it will show you the potential bird you saw. It is important to note that scientists have made great use of the data from this app for ornithology research. In fact, there have been over 900 million data points collected and used by researchers, and it's our hope that our web-based platform can be used in a similar way. So before going through our first walkthrough, we'd love it if you could all pull out your phone, scan our QR code, which will take you to our Figma prototype and will allow you to follow along with us on our user journey. For most questions, please click next to get to the next page as you don't have to input all the information. So the scene is set for Nikita as she is walking down near Fisherman's Wharf. Visiting Fisherman's Wharf, I noticed a QR code on the side of the pier. As an avid QR code scanner, I whipped out my phone to see just what shark seekers had to say. I saw a fisher boat recently come into dock with some catch on the boat and wanted to report what I saw. After filling in some basic info to assist the research efforts of Shark Stewart's nonprofit. Scrolling through photos, I can see what different common California sharks look like in the water and on land as catch. I selected a great white shark because it looked the most similar and added some more unique details I saw regarding the shark, along with attaching a photo. After scrolling through various California coastal sharks, I realized I didn't know much about the sharks native to this area. So I continued to take a knowledge quiz. I realized I'd never seen a shark in the ocean, but wanted to continue to learn more. Five questions later, I learned a bit more about sharks, just enough to pique my curiosity. And finally, for my little cousin who loves to play with QR codes, there's something for her. She gets to figure out what type of shark she, is, she would be in the ocean using her personality. In the past, shark stewards volunteers would manually search for Instagram posts, Twitter, Facebook, and fishing forums to find details about shark catch pictures. When looking for ways to address this problem, we wanted to implement a more technological solution, along with the citizen science program previously explained. Our idea was to collect a data set uh, of online postings from Twitter, where many fishers are known to boast about their catch. However, our team was not the most code savvy. With the help of Dan, we reached out to the Bay Area Teen Science Group, looking for a high school student that was an avid coder to assist us in implementing a web scraper. In collaboration with him, I worked to highlight our goals and constraints in creating this web scraper. We addressed specific hashtags, time period, and a platform that he would work on the bot for. We created a web scraper for Twitter that would look through certain hashtags that may correlate to relevant tweets that depict details of shark, shark catch. So in the next video, I kind of asked him to explain because he knows most about his code, but we're specifically looking through a shark catch hashtag. Hey, I hope you're doing well. My name is Smart, and this is my web scraper I made for the Twitter sharks, um, for shark catches on Twitter. Uh, basically, it's this Python file. Um, it uses Selenium and Beautiful Soup to basically um, open a fake version of Google Chrome, which I'll be showing you right here. Um, and it collects different parts of tweets, such as their user, the user or the user's um, handle or username. Um, and then it sources out into links. Um, you basically run the script. It opens up. It's basically going to go to the the hashtag on Twitter for shark catches. Um, it's going to automatically scroll down once it finishes refreshing. It's going to automatically scroll down um, to get all the newest tweets. And then it's going to go to the, each and every tweet and basically um, uh, scrape the tweets for their username and user handle. Um, and it does this for all of them. And as you can see from this uh, terminal output, I'm getting their username and the user um, the user's uh, actual name. Um, so like the handle and the username. Um, but basically after that, uh, it gets the links of every single tweet. So like this link over here is URL. And then that's what's going here basically. So going on to talking about our future plans, our idea of implementing the QR code in the future is to partner with small businesses that are ocean focused. 
Three specific businesses that we were looking at were Sea Trek, which is a outdoor ocean adventure company located locally in the Bay Area, Bamboo Reef Scuba, which is a local scuba and dive shop, as well as Newport Landing Whale Watching, which is another whale watching company down in Newport Beach. So in order to spread our reach a little bit further. From our experience, reaching out to local businesses is difficult and takes more time than we had for this project timeline. In the future, we plan to spend more time creating these relationships in order to further our data aggregation. In order to make sure things are working smoothly, we plan to run a trial of placing the QR code in these businesses to see the pitfalls and successes of collecting data through a citizen science program. This is important in order to assess the drawbacks of our solution, which might include a lack of engagement for this web-based platform. Seeing as our solution is heavily reliant on voluntary engagement. After our trial, we will take the feedback and effect effectiveness of our QR code, make modifications and repeat the process again. Our project partner is currently working on an app platform and we wanted to create a wireframe that we could hand off to Shark Stewards on their mission to create a more, to encourage more community involvement. Hey, hey, I hope you're doing well. My name is Smart and... As for our web scraper, we are still working through minor changes, such as parsing through more hashtags to find relevant posts on Twitter. We are also looking to develop a natural language processing component of the web scraper in order to pull more relevant information from the posts themselves, such as date, time, location. Furthermore, we want to create a larger data set to integrate the data collected from the QR code and the data collected from the web scraper, hoping that shark stewards can gather enough data in order to use for their policy briefings. At the moment, shark stewards is currently working on creating a web scraper for Instagram posts with relevant hashtags, and we want to deliver the bot that we're working on in order to widen their social media access. Sharks serve as a key indicator of ocean's health, and in aggregating this data, we are looking to keep both sharks and people that enjoy the ocean safe. Thank you for listening to our solution, and we're opening to, we're open to answer any questions. Well, to start, let's invite David McGuire to the conversation. Um, David, are you with us? Yes. Hello. Hi. Thank you. Uh, well, first off, I want to thank uh, Dan and you and, and the Fung uh, Challenge team and the students were really great to work with. Uh, I really enjoyed it. And it's great to be connected to Cal after quite a few years since I used to work there. Um, yeah, I, I don't, I'm not sure if it was clear, but what we we're actually getting at with the help of the students is looking at recreational catch or sports catch and release of sharks, particularly large sharks. There is some data through fish and wildlife on commercial catch because it's a legal requirement that they report, but there is no legal requirement of reporting for recreational catch. So we've actually seen thousands of observations of large sharks, including endangered species being attracted, caught and captured and sometimes killed near public beaches. So this is part of a, not only a purely scientific project, interest just in data, uh, but also sociological, uh, has a sociological interest, human behavior element, which actually increased during COVID, there was more fishing, but also public safety because a lot of these fishermen are targeting large sharks like great white sharks near beaches where people are surfing, children are swimming. So I think it has so many exciting uh, dimensions and th the whole goal was to have this to be an open source so that other people could use it, which is I'm really excited about the QR code, uh, sharing that around, putting in a lifeguard stations, that's amazing, uh, public safety, but also just businesses so that people can learn. So having that educational dimension is really important when it comes to animals that people misunderstand, particularly sharks or larger predators. So great job team, I'm really impressed. and really fun to see uh, the presentation. All of you actually, all the presentations are really remarkable. Thank you, David. Um, I'm gonna open it up to the rest of the class, including our judges and the teaching team to ask any questions or have any commentary. Um, uh, quick question, a wonderful job. 
by the way. Just great work. Really impressed with your prototype and your presentation. Um, I know that there have been some legal challenges to web scrapers. Did you get into that at all? And if so, what were your decisions? Um, we didn't exactly get into that because the only posts that um, I had the high school coder look at were public posts. Um, but we didn't do uh, too much research into that. But again, that would be something going further we would look at. Got it. Okay. Thanks for acknowledging it. I had a, um, or, okay, so it's a two-part question. First question is actually for Andy, if Andy's was still with us. Um, Andy, I know that you left us because you're going to be doing work around DNA sequencing of wastewater from watersheds. Is that, you're still doing that, Andy? Or am I even, am I getting the general gist of what you do, right? Kind of, yeah, around that. That's okay. a, a larger goal, but yeah. Okay, do you? Could there be, I mean, thinking about it, just another data set or another way of getting data about concentration of certain animals or populations of animals, could that also be, could you like pull a sample of water, for example, ocean water, and be able to get an, like a relative like distribution of, and sequence it, you know, for the, whatever DNA matter is in it, and then get a relative distribution of variety of species concentrated in that like parcel of water that you just pulled? Yeah, so there's a lot of research and it's an expanding field of environmental DNA, um, specifically in biodiversity monitoring, um, both in marine systems, but also, you know, freshwater and anywhere really that you think that uh, animal might leave uh, DNA in the environment. Um, and so uh, there's been a lot of work to just uh, build out the technology for not only just the presence and absence of those species, but actually inferring potential for abundance of those species. So how much of that species might be, be there. But um, yeah, I think that there's some, some real opportunity to leverage environmental sources of DNA to assess like a lot of these species that we care about are really elusive in nature and it's really hard to see them. And so if they're leaving something, a little trail for us to find them, then it could be the smoking gun to saying, you know, here's, here's evidence that we know this endangered species is in the area. We should be looking out for potential sightings of it. Um, so mm. I think that one of the things I was really interested about this is like, yes, it's really cool about sharks, but there's a lot of animals that are captured for recreational purposes that are not just sharks, but fish that are endangered and um, a lot of terrestrial animals. And I think that there could be really like sort of parallels to this platform for other types of species that um, we don't track and we don't know that impact. I mean, I worked on amphibians and one of the main, <laughs> the main things that we worry about is the amphibian pet trade and how some of these amphibians getting out into the wild that, you know, we have no, no data on assessing that. So this would be really, really interesting to pair that with. Yeah. Thank you, Andy. Um, and I guess Andy, a great commentary, by the way. Um, the second part of the question is the, do you, can you guys foresee your platform incorporating other more, um, more either more current or novel forms of data um, in the form of like these, what, what Andy's been, Andy's talking about, including other animals and other species that are endangered. Um, that's my question. I can go ahead and answer it then. Um, yeah, for sure. I don't see how that would be uh, really an issue in integrating, especially in uh, shark uh, stewards final goal of incorporating shark watch and having a data hub where they would coalesce all these sources that's easy, easy to use, easy to understand. Definitely more data is definitely better. Um, the only thing that's slightly different about the DNA part is in this uh, challenge, we're looking at instances where sharks interact with human beings and shark catch. So you wouldn't be able to really read that from pure DNA, but it would definitely be helpful to see the density of sharks uh, and other species that live in the area. But once again, focusing on human interaction with sharks as well as shark catch, that's something that we really need uh, citizen science for, and that's the QR code. Thank you. Uh, we have just under four minutes left for questions or commentary. Um, if there's anybody else who'd like to share or ask a question, please feel free.
oh, this is cool. David, can you actually talk about that? I mean, you don't mind? We have a couple extra minutes. Can you tell us about this? Collecting eDNA on white sharks at the Farallon Islands with the mini ROV? Yeah, well, eDNA, is a, as uh, Andy said, is a, well, it's been around for several years, but it's a great tool to collect data on species, as Andy said, that are evasive, elusive, or sometimes outright impossible to find, or even dangerous if it's a white shark. And sharks in particular are hard to get close enough to get a biopsy, get a sample, or retrieve it if you get it. Um, so yeah, there's a postdoc at Stanford and Barbara Block's lab, and we have an ROV uh, that was donated by a company called SoFar in, in San Francisco. They were in Berkeley, and they also make a smart buoy system uh, that collects uh, meteorological data that is not attached. Um, and it's a really cool startup company, but uh, they gave us this mini ROV. It's about this big, and it has these little uh, crucibles, and we're able to see with live feed on the camera. And, uh, you know, te technically you don't need to see the shark, but the closer you get, the higher co the concentration whether it's feces, urine, or skin. Uh, and so it's, it's, uh, it's expanded the knowledge base uh, by species too, because you can actually, I mean, by individual, sorry, not just by species, but by individual. So that does give you an idea of how many sharks might be in a location at one time. Pretty cool. Yeah, really cool. Thank you for sharing that. Um, okay, I think we'll cap it at there. Thanks, David, and thank you, yeah. Team Six. That was a great presentation, a great, uh, great uh, project overall.